don't think you're immune. You're not immune to that river. Here's mud. Mud. It's all inside the water jacket. Mud. That's just what I could get off with my finger. Don't think you're immune. Here's all kinds of salt particles. Salt buildup. Crystalline type salt that was all around this. There is an interior anode right there. Look at that. There's your anode. Look at that. Look at the salt build up. I could barely get this one out. You're gonna pay now or pay a whole lot more later. I'm going to alleviate as much of this as possible. This one I can barely get out. Oh yeah, I'd love to have a bore scope to look around in there. I can see all the mud right there. If somebody wants to send me a bore scope, I will gladly give you all the credit for it. You send me a bore scope so I can continue to do a little more in-depth videos. The link to my website is always in the description and that's where you can always email me from and I'll send you my address there's mud in there St. John's River sludge well here you go folks this is right off the service manual. There's your interior anodes. Inspect every 50 hours or three months. If two thirds of the zinc anode has corroded away, replace anode. The anode should be periodic, periodically cleaned with a wire brush to ensure maximum effectiveness. The anode covered may be separated from the power unit body by inserting and turning a 10 millimeter bolt to function as a screw jack. Here you go. There it is, right here. You take the bolt out And you put in a, there's a screw that goes right there. And you take that out and then you use a 10 millimeter bolt to go in. And I can tell you, I've done this enough times that, um, yeah, those threads right in there, it sort of gets kind of, some of them get messed up. And they, these, these don't want to always completely pull out. See, there's your anodes right there. There's another one hidden down here. So every 50 hours or three months. Can you imagine that? Do you know nobody does that, I'm sure? I only do it once a year, but I am now going to do it at least every six months. I'm, I'm changing and you'll see I'm doing a whole lot more too. I wanted to show you what the actual service manual says. All right, here's what they look like. And half of them are staying in the hole when you take them out. So um, I know this is my second video about this, but as you'll see, I'm going to try to do a little bit of a remedy. 
Alright, so hang with me. Your engine is full of this too. If you if you haven't done this, and you're my favorite saying because in the charter fishing business, I can't wait around for other people to do stuff, right? So my favorite saying is if you want it taken care of, then you better learn to take care of it yourself. So just to get this screw out of that zinc, this is what I'm having to do. I got to dig out the crap. All right. Look at this thing. This is the zinc doing its job. That's what's left. And I mean, half of it was stuck in the hole, and I'll, I'll show you on the next one. Okay, let's go clean this up. I'm sort of doing everything in stations here. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking out each o-ring and I am putting them back in without the zinc out without the anode and you're saying geez Dave why are you doing that well you'll see in a minute I get all my parts at boats Boats.net. There's some corrosion block just to make everything slippery. All right, what I got going on here is it didn't really work out as with a lot of things. I went and got basically the kit. There's a pump. Okay, a pump, hoses, all kinds of adapters, this little pump right here. And what I was supposed to do was I'm going to flush out the entire engine. And I was going to do it with this red, red lime. Red lime marine will break down mud, calcium, tiger shells, barnacles, limes, rust, muds. It dissolves shells, believe it or not, and other mineral deposits. This basically, I mean, I've done the whole entire Salt X thing, and or uh, Salt Away, and that stuff just isn't strong enough. All right, just so you know, this is the difference that this red lime does. Now you got the light blasting right in here. So you get that white circle. But just so you know, see that water twinkling? That's it. I'm trying to get the light right for y'all. Okay. Disregard this white dot right here in the middle. Look around, see that water twinkling? That's it bubbling. See the, it's almost like, see it like foaming? Right over here. That's what it's doing. It's eating away all the calcium. And I'll, oh, you can see it just purging right over here. See that shadow of my finger? It's just purging. And I'll show you what's in here. I put a couple of the old zincs in here and it's eating this away. And I got an old thermostat in here. There's the old thermostat. Clean as a whistle. That's the difference. I don't really believe Salt Away is doing this. 
I don't think salt away is going to do that. Look at that. It comes out absolutely squeaky clean. Now it's eating away at all this salt deposits on these old zincs. So I'm going to leave them in there. And you can see this stuff literally. Look at that. It's boiling up. Look at that. See it? It's eating away. And this is diluted. This stuff is diluted now. It's boiling away at all that calcium or salt deposits. Look at it. Right over here, see that shadow? It's like boiling up. But at the same time, it's safe on your hands. So that's the reason that I'm using this. So I called them because what you're supposed to do is I had this little container over here. I had this little container right there and I put the pump in there and I filled it full of a couple gallons of water and then I ran from the pump this pump I ran it it was in here and I ran it out with this hose up into my Suzuki uh, flusher and what I ended up doing is it will be harmful to your sacrificial anodes, this, this uh, red line. I tried pumping it from this container that was underneath the boat or underneath the engine, just big enough to fit in there. And what that is to do is to catch all the flush back, okay? And you're going to take it and you're going to pump it and you're going to recycle it through the engine. Well, I was going to recycle it right through here, through the flush tube. And what I have is no sacrificial anodes are in here. These are just the caps that are on here right now. And I took out the thermostats inside. Well, guess what? That pump doesn't have enough flow to do anything. It just really doesn't have any flow. Uh, it comes out very weak and Obviously, I talked to a, I talked to them, and they, it's supposed to work, but obviously it's not working for me. So, what I'm going to do, instead of trying to pump it through, is I'm going to run the engine, and it's going to be highly diluted, and I'm going to run the engine several times with two gallons of the red lime in it, red lime marine. I'm going to put this in there, I'm going to run it, the water will get hot, and I'm going to let it cool, come back a couple hours later, start it up, do it again. Oh, I'm going to do it over and over. Because that pump, when it was trying to pump in here, wouldn't even fill up to this zinc in the water jacket right here. And it needs to flow. And it's going to flush all that mud and debris. So you'll see it, it'll end up being in the bottom of this tub. I'm trying to come up with a new maintenance schedule to um, when I check these I'm gonna flush the engine and I've used the salt away and I've used everything and this is supposed to be much stronger well hello YouTube it is a whole nother day it's the next day and I've got this whole thing working the way I sort of wanted it to in the first place. I uh, showed you yesterday, I was about on my wits end. So it's a little late in the day now, it's uh, Tuesday. I just got back from going to an allergist and got punctured in the arm 28 times, got punctured in the back like 48 times to determine that I'm uh, I'm allergic to grasses, mold, trees, and bushes because I've been having a huge problem for like two years where my nose right here just completely goes solid.
It was completely clogged up. And uh, so it's a little late to get started this. I think it's almost noon. And I'm going to show you yesterday. I know I was sort of all over the place. But I'm going to show you what the whole game plan was. All right. So here is, let me turn on a light. I always get bitched at for there not being enough light. Okay, this is the kit that I bought. Ridlime Marine Portable Flushing Kit. It's for AC units, outboard motors, inboard motors, heat exchangers, and more. And this is basically what you get. You get a five gallon bucket. Woohoo! Yeah, baby! You get a gallon of red lime, you get the pump, and then the accoutrements. You can see here, it's uh, you get some hoses, some different adapters, and a clamp. And this is the pump with a filter on it. And here's the red lime. Now, the whole objective of this is to descale the inside of the motor get as much salt out and getting out the mud. So what it actually says here is it's a portable flushing system designed for boating enthusiasts in mind to clean scale and build up in various applications with convenience and ease. Simply set up the kit per the included uh, instructions and Ridline Marine Descaler with the amount of water for best cleaning. Here's the pump they gave you. I just got done doing my Amazon review. That's for the koi pond, folks. That's a koi pond. And here's... There's the... There's the little filter. Wonderful thing about this, it's got a long cord. It's got a jumbo cord. Why? Because it's for your pond. I might build me a cement pond in the backyard. Here's one of the hoses. Just dishwasher type hoses. You get a couple stainless clamps. You get a... And I know what they're thinking. You're gonna be flushing um, out of the bucket through something back into the bucket and you're going to set this in there and it gives you these various fittings okay they got different hole sizes to go into uh, like on an inboard heat exchanger you'd be going into different pipes so i've got two gallons i bought an extra gallon and what kills you is the is the shipping and handling on this thing that is ridiculous I don't know why they're just not having Amazon fulfill some of this for them and get, you know, Amazon Prime. So here's what I got going on. As I did yesterday, and I ran the engine literally in this, this tub is full of the red line. So what I got in here is that. I went to Home Depot and I just bought another pump. And what I got is the hose going up into here. And in the engine, I've got the thermostats out up here. And what I want to do is I want this completely thing to be filled full of the red line and wash it all out. I want all this washed out. All right. So here's the pump that I bought. Who says money don't bring happiness? Let's get to the English side. Okay, now this thing here, this pump, that probably was somewhere of like, you know, what, five gallons an hour? I don't know, not much. This one here, 1,680 gallons. This is never built. And it does a 20 foot maximum vertical lift. So that's a sump pump. I looked at that right there, 1,680 gallons per hour, because I know the inside of the engine 
is probably several gallons. And I mean, you gotta see, it really pumps it out of here. So what I wanted is to sit and let the red lime do its thing because that's the whole idea with this. Portable flushing kit. Descale and clean the mud out. Now granted, afterwards I will run it. I will run this in fresh water and really flush it and everything. So who says money don't buy happiness? I just spent another hundred dollars. That ever built pump with tax, hundred dollars at the depot, the Home Depot. So, I mean, I'm trying to set myself up for maintenance. So, when I change out these in external anodes, right here, here, you got a hidden one down here. You got one right there. You got one down there in the foot, all right? So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you've got your pressure regulating valve right there that I cannot get the cap off of anymore. Last year I could pull that cap off, this year I can't. There's a spring in there that's regulating the pressure of your water as it's getting pumped up or going out, one or the other, I can't remember. I don't know what it said in the, uh, I can't remember what it said in the, in the service manual. So now I'm doing what I want to do and I'm gonna prove it to you right now. Watch this. All right, here's the top for this most anode. We pull the bolt out. This one's pretty wiggly. There's water. There's the red line coming right out, folks. So it's reaching all up in here. And that is what this kit needed. Problem with the whole kit is they don't give you a strong enough pump. They give you a good enough pump for my little 15 kicker over there, but not for a big engine like this. This thing's filling up full of, you know, a couple gallons of water. All right, so now I have it set up where the entire system is every time I go to either change these zincs out or either change them out or just check them, right? I can get some red lime. I want to keep my engine and all this mud free, okay? I'll probably end up using red lime. Problem is, is that darn, oops, sorry. That darn uh, shipping and handling ends up making it, you know, so expensive. I mean, not expensive, you know, I mean, it's 20, I don't know what's it ends up making it $27 a gallon or something. And here's the thermostats, one on each side right in here, and I've got the thermostats out. What I'm doing is I'm filling up every orifice I can in this engine for the red line. That's the ticket. Still, there's going to be more to come. I want to see what's on the bottom of this barrel. But that's my maintenance schedule now. Just so you know, you're coming to this channel 99.9% .9 of the time for some education, right? I mean, that's what I do. I mean, hell, I had a fishing charter the other day with two people never fished a day in their life. We couldn't worry about catching fish. We had to teach them how to fish. That was the name of the game for the entire day, is teaching them how to fish. Same thing as golf. I don't know how to play golf. So if I go golfing, I'm not expecting to go out and like win against other people or anything like that. I can't even get a ball on the green 
So when I go golfing, I just need to learn something about golf. That's what our, that was my last charter. That's what we did. That's sort of why you're going to come to this channel. I'm just going to show you things because I'm big. This is my livelihood. I really want to take care of it. And uh, I do lots of maintenance stuff that the average person is not doing. So I want to keep it. The ultimate V6. All right, well, this has been about almost three hours flushing. I can see it. I don't think you're going to be able to see it. But this is just the bucket that I had the pea stream going in. And I see a black circle at the bottom. I know the camera and everything and the glare is in the way, but there is a black circle in the bottom of all the debris or dirt. So let's look inside the uh, water jacket here. Looking pretty clean compared to what it looked like before. Yes, pretty clean. You can look in there before and see just pure mud. I think I'm going to uh, let this bucket or this barrel loose and we'll see what's in the bottom of it. And then I'm going to do the same thing and flush it out with fresh water. All right, well, with the ridges in this bucket, it's almost like panning for gold. You let a little of the water go. Oh my gosh, can I see some unbelievable particulates. Yeah, I think this is going to be part of my maintenance plan at least. And now this is after running, running the engine in this bucket like three times with the red lot. Lots and lots of trash and mud debris. First off, there's the first ridge in the bucket. See all that? Look at that. That's just what's caught on that lip right there. Pour it off very lightly and see if I can leave some of the garbage. See if I can leave a little bit of the garbage of the St. Johns River in here. This might not be actually all of it. Because a lot of it just went out. But there it is. I don't know if you're going to see it, but you can definitely see all that brown material. Look at it. All them shell, it's like shells looking type stuff. And I know you're just seeing the camera, but if you can see some of that brown, I hope it shows up. Or you just got to take my word for it, folks. This bottom of this barrel has got all kinds of brown dirt in it. Alright, so... There you go. Let me pour it off. Now, yeah, you can see it now. Let me pour some of the water off. Very slowly. See all that brown? That brown used to be in my engine. That brown is all the way back here. All that is dirt. So it did do what I wanted. I want my engine to cool off or run a little cooler. I don't care if it's just a couple degrees. But you know, the, the question always is, oh, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. That is a lot of crap. It's all over the bottom of the barrel here. All over. Did, does your engine run the same temperature when it was new as it does five years later? I seriously doubt it, folks. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean the barrel out. I'm going to clean this barrel out good. And I'm going to do the same thing 
with fresh water. I have not. I just took these out. I just took these out. I have not put those back in. I'm going to put them back in with no anodes. And um, I'm going to purge this out again just with fresh water and uh, let it run for an hour or two and then I'm going to button her all back up. I got the I got Tupperware to put back on. So does your engine look that clean? Underneath the Tupperware? Underneath the covers? Mine does. Alright, so let me dump this out and get her flushing one more time for a little while. and clean in there. Pop her in. Bolt covered in corrosion block. Now, if somebody ever wants to send me a bore scope to be able to look in different parts of the engine, to get really close up, or if anybody ever wants to send me a torque wrench, a nice small torque wrench, it sure would be appreciated. You know, a lot of these channels, I believe that's about seven pounds is what it's supposed to be. A lot of these YouTube channels, people send stuff. I always tell everybody, you can send me anything. And it'll show up in a video, most likely. And uh, you'll get some warm fuzzies out of it if you're if you're a uh, distributor or anything like that. Or you don't even have to be a distributor. You could be a mechanic who has a brand new torque wrench, and you don't need your old one. Because I need a torque wrench, and I'd like to have a bore scope or one of those bore scopes that go to your uh, smartphone, even. I've seen a doctor use one of those on a video one time. He hooked up a scope with a big, long, bendable cord on it with a like infrared light, and he was looking in some dude's ear. So, yeah. I don't know why all these other channels... People send stuff and everything. You can send stuff to me. You want my address? Um, just go to my website and click on Contact Cap Dave. There you go. Alright, well that's one, two, and three over here. And now I get to do the other side. I'm going to lay in, besides these, all these new zincs, uh, there's another one down here, and there's one down in the low pickup on a 250 Suzuki, or just many Suzukis. If they have the pointy low water pickup, there's a zinc hidden in there. And then there's one on the other side on the lower bottom here of the cowling. And I'm going to drop in some brand new thermostats so my engine should be absolutely squeaky clean ready to go and I can't wait to see that if there's even a one or two degree temperature difference because it's not all insulated with salt and mud and now that I got this new hundred dollar pump from the depot and the barrel I know now I can just order a gallon of rid line, rid lime, and do this every three, four, six months, whatever schedule I end up putting myself on. As I showed earlier, these zincs in your motor, it doesn't matter what motor you have, but in the service manual of this engine, it says check it every 50 hours or three months. 
as of right now, I'm just going to button it up and put all the covers back on, which is very tedious. Ask any mechanic. They know. And I'm going to button it up, and I'll be done. And I'll make mention on another video if I saw any kind of improvement. But what I have is a peace of mind. Peace of mind that I know now inside here that it's pretty cleaned out. And that's the ultimate goal. Well, what I wanted to do here for a couple minutes is kind of do a wrap-up of all what you saw um, in the prior footage and give you a little history. What started this entire thing that, I'm, that I did, this whole engine flush in conjunction with my normal maintenance, which is changing out those zinc internal zinc anodes is I mean I do that usually once a year one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do it a lot more than once a year pop them off they're very easy to pop off double check them and I'm going to do more of the flushing with maybe the uh, rid lime and running the outboard out versus just flushing it on the Suzuki flusher because if you really read your owner's manual, what it's going to tell you is, number one, maybe not owner's manual, but the service manual that I have, because I've got the entire diagnostics now that you plug it in to your laptop, and on there it's got the entire service manuals for all the engines. And I remember reading that... Above and beyond everything, literally flushing, running the engine. That's the number one. Number two is putting the muffs on it and running it out that way. That's number two. Number three is using the Suzuki, or doesn't matter, Mercury, Yamaha, Evinrude, it doesn't matter what engine it is, then using their flusher. That's about third in line in all reality. And I can say this from experience because of the fact that in five years, my engine clogged up pretty bad. And what started it all, and that's the reason I'm doing this wrap up right now, is my fuel cooler got full of total crap. And that is on the back of your uh, vapor separator tank. And if you have a four stroke, and it's a, I guess, a newer engine, or they all had them, is there's 10 pounds of stuff in a five-pound sack underneath your cowling. So a lot of these engines will have oil cooling systems, fuel cooling systems. They got that vapor separator tank, all this stuff, because there's so much in a confined space and there's so much heat build up under there all right well what happened to me on and it happened many many trips you just didn't hear about it if you're if you're a regular uh, viewer of my videos or a subscriber and you get the notifications and everything I never really did a video about any of this is behind my VST tank was the fuel cooler and that got clogged I can put in a, maybe a couple pictures right about in here right now to show you what kind of came out of that what it is is the fuel runs next to water and it's cooling it just enough to keep it from vaporizing. I don't know what the temperature of gasoline, where, where it goes from liquid to vapor. But vapor, it, your, your outboard ain't running on vapor. And mine got clogged. So the engine would run fantastically, no problem, all morning. Soon as it got where it's hot, I would stop, we'd anchor up, whatever, fish... And then I'd go to leave that spot after running for three, four hours earlier, and I'd get 300 yards and the engine would die. And it wouldn't just die. 
it would die, and then you'd go to start it again, and it was like starved of fuel. If you mechanics out there would know, outboard mechanics, you'd know what I'm talking about. Um, so I, it happened over and over and over again, and I didn't know what was going on. I tried everything. I mean, we were doing all kinds of swapping fuel filters. I was, you know, I mean, fuel filter, like in the boat, like Raycors and things like that. I ended up changing out all of my filters, changing uh, my fuel system, fuel filter system in the boat, adding a, uh, what is that, an anti-siphon valve that I didn't have because I thought I was getting just back draining fuel. And it still kept happening and happening and happening until I got with a local mechanic who gave me the, all right, we can't look at it for two weeks, but he's a nice enough guy being, knowing that I'm in the charter business. Uh, he says, check your fuel cooler. That river out there is a disaster when it comes to mud and dirt and everything. Check your fuel cooler. So what did I do? is I went on Boats.net and they have the exploded versions of different parts of your engine and I went to the fuel system and I found the fuel cooler. So that's how I could pinpoint its location. So then it was behind the VST tank, which is your vapor separator tank, has a pump on the outside and a pump on the inside before it goes from the low pressure filter goes through another little tiny filter, goes into a pump, then goes into your vapor separator tank that has a, has a pump in it, that goes into your high pressure filter. I know it sounds confusing, but when it happens to you, I want you to know that your fuel cooler is probably stopped up. And mine was about this long it's a CNC machined piece of aluminum with water inlet at the top, water inlet at the bottom, but then fuel running on the other side of it. So it's like two tubes in one. Well, I ordered it, but it was going to be like 10 days before I get it. Because, and then there was the hurricane that came by. And everything was all screwed up because... Even Boats.net didn't have that in stock, so they had to get it from Suzuki. So my dad says, why don't we do like a real mechanic would do? They just make it work. Well, on the end of this fuel cooler tube, it's as if Suzuki just plugs each end where the water goes with a pressed-in aluminum piece. Well, we drilled both ends out, and... Blew, you can't blow through it. It was clogged solid. So then I got a big long drill bits and that were smaller than where the water inlet was and went in and pulled it out. You wouldn't believe the garbage coming out. It smelled like rotten eggs. So on top of that then after drilling it out the stuff was so like concrete in there. We drilled it out and then I had um like brushes that are on twisted wire and I made sort of a drill bit out of that and I stuck it down like a pipe cleaner and put it in the drill and just augered in and out, in and out, in and out and polished all that up inside. And then what we ended up doing is a real mechanic job. Since I couldn't get the part, I used JB Weld, what's it called? JB Weld Steel or something. And we made our own plugs on the end. And that's what's in my engine right now. Now I got the new fuel cooler and I'm holding that as a spare. Because I know this could happen again. Five years down the line. But if you do proper maintenance, like my flushing, my descaling that you just saw, there's a possibility that might not be five years down the line. And running the engine in my big trough versus just putting it on the flusher. Get that engine hot. Get uh, Run the RPMs up a little bit and everything. 
because I want, and then I even turn it off. Then I clean something else. I come back, let the engine hot soak. That's the whole, that's what they call it, a hot soak. And then start it up again and run it for a few more minutes to possibly get that heat buildup under the cover. And it's going to open up that fuel cooler line. There's, I guess, you know, it's not, water may not be running through it all the time. You got to realize how much your engine is, is run on sensors and valves and openers and thing closers and it's stuff I'm not a mechanic, but I'm I'm practical and I know what they're doing. Once I learned it, now I know what to look for. And what that is is to keep your interior part of your water flowing. Keep it clean. That's gonna save me in the long run. I can't go out and buy new engines every couple years. I mean I'm finding out that the engine that I just bought five years ago is now $2,000 more brand new. So to sum this up, I truly think that if you run a river or water like I do, that eventually you may have the same problem. Yamahas have the same fuel cooler that I have, a tube. I just came back from giving the mechanic a gift certificate to a restaurant that I go to because I wanted to show my appreciation for him just throwing me a hint and pointing at a at a Yamaha and saying this this is this is your problem check it out go check it out so I was very appreciative because he knows I can't wait around two weeks for him to fix it and I don't have the money to be paying you know, uh, all these thousands of dollars to have something fixed that I can do myself. And the more I do myself, the more confident I am of keeping my engine running, which keeps me in business. Like I said in the beginning, don't feel like you're the cock of the walk because it's going to happen to you. There's too much going on underneath those cowlings of these new four strokes. There's a lot going on that you don't know. So you need to know, unless you just want to spend a lot of money. That's the wrap-up. That's what started all of this, is he told me it's probably your fuel cooler is clogged up. So what happened is the engine runs, then it builds up all that heat. It can't go in. The fuel isn't, it's passing through the fuel cooler, but no water's passing through it. And then it's vaporizing when I stop, when I stop and sit for hours. Then I go to start it. It starts up with what's in the, the, the fuel VST tank, basically, what fuel's in it. And it gets me 300 yards, and it would conk right out. And thank God a lot of people make fun of me because I went and bought that 15 horsepower uh, little Mercury Pro Kicker. I'll let you in on a secret. Five times it got me and customers home. And the last time I took my parents out to lunch via the river in the boat, and it got us home that day too. So you can make all the fun you want about having a kicker engine. But that's a good investment for me because you ain't coming home like in these tides and this current that we have, you're not coming home on no trolling motor. And then... I mean, nothing against CETA, but you're going to be anchored, sitting there, waiting and waiting. If it's on a weekend or a busy Friday, even a Monday or Tuesday, I've sat waiting an hour and a half, two hours for them to show up, and I'm only four miles away from their location. So don't think that none of this can happen to you. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Give it a thumbs up. There is so much going into this video, and I know this was a really long one, but I believe it to be very important. I, I don't see this not even happening to guys in fresh water. You think you're out of the woods because you run in fresh water. If you're running in fresh water and it is nasty, brown, dirt, water, hey, it can happen to you too. Salt. Salt water just makes it that much worse. 
So I've learned a lot. I have learned so much. And I want to thank everybody that's happened. Gary, you know who you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know you can come down here anytime you want, and you're going fishing. Don't worry about a thing. One of my subscribers, Gary, has been on the phone with me, texting, messaging, because he's a marine mechanic. And he's been my, uh, my go-to guy. So I want to thank Gary. I want to thank Mike and, at uh, Morningstar Marina, who's uh, the mechanic there. My dad for helping me out so much. And uh, I want to thank Mercury Little Pro Kicker for getting me home. I'll see you on the next one.